So now we are recording the talk show. Okay, we are going to start uh, again. Let me tell you, thank you so much for being here and accepting our invitation. So uh, to be able to start formally this episode, that is the episode 44, 42, uh, I will start reading the next introduction. Women, okay. as we know, are no less than, than any men in any field. Over time, we have seen several examples of women excelling in various STEM fields and serving the society for the larger cause. We at the STEM Girls Initiative aims to groom girls with the same kind of inspiration and still at heart to excel in STEM fields and do their best. This talk show is a platform for the women in STEM to talk to the girls aspiring to excel in it. We are sure that after hearing from our guests, all the audience will be inspired to reach the stars. During this talk show, we will be conversing with a woman in the field of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. A woman who has made her mark and graciously taken the time to tell us about her journey and share with us her wisdom. So, our guest today is the pharmacist Etchim Faith Nsikwe. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, go ahead. Okay, thank you. It's, it's okay if I call you Faith? Yeah, it's okay. I think that would be okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Our guest today is a young Nigerian licensed pharmacist with a Bachelor of Pharmacy degree from the University of Nigeria. She is also a plant scientist, a bi biotechnologist, and a biochemist from the same University of Nigeria. She is a member of the Health Economics and Outcomes Research Cure eSport, and also an alumna of the Global Health Focus GHF with continuing education certific certification in American Heart Association Basic Life Support, BLS, Med Kigo Health Center, North Adams, Massachusetts, Massachusetts University, United States of America, antimicrobial stewardship, improving clinical outcomes by optimization of antibiotic practices from Stanford University School of Medicine, and University of Rhode Island College of Pharmacy. DOT Training Program for Women in Hepatitis Africa, WIHA, Live Well Initiative World Health Organization. She has an avid interest in clinical pharmacy and pharmacy management. She is a healthcare out leader and an experienced volunteer and advocate for people center public health, educa health education. She utilizes digital health technology to create awareness and help reduce mortality from preventable diseases. With years of experience in health communications advocacy in non-communicable diseases, especially diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, sexual and rep reproductive health, she is known for creative use of social media to influence healthy living and practices and also combating health misinformation and advocacy for right and safe use and effective medication. She is the innovative founder creator of the medical health wellness and beauty pages of Metaverse Facebook. Health Vault, Instagram, Health Vault. So, Thank you so much again, Madame, for being here. We really appreciate your help on working with us in the in motivating girls and more young women to to be part of the STEM field. All right, thank you. So before we start, I don't know if you would want to present yourself or say something. Um, I don't have much to say. Um, thank you for the opportunity, STEM Girls and Age Network. That's science, um, technology, engineering, and um, girls in mathematics. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. 
So uh, okay. now I think we can start with the questions. And uh, the first question that we have, uh, I think that your camera is, oh, okay, now it's fine, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we're gonna start with the first question. Uh, the first question is, what is your field of study and what got you interested in it? Okay, I my field of study, uh, I'm a pharmacist by training, I'm a licensed pharmacist. Although pharmacy is my, is more like my a second career choice. I trained earlier on or I graduated earlier on as a pharma, as a biochemist, a plant science and biotechnology from the University of Nigeria. And then I came back again to study pharmacy. It's my second degree. But one thing that made me want to become a pharmacist is my, my how do I put it? My interest on how drugs work. And then, and when I came to study pharmacy, I discovered that pharmacy will teach you both medical and management skills, you know, which can be applied in various places, not just in pharmacy. And then it brings more opportunities for work and career growth. You know, there are so many vast opportunities and un un unexploited areas of pharmacy in this part of the world where I come from. I don't know if I answered to the best of the much you want me to. Yes, thank you so much. Um, maybe uh, another question a little bit related is, who has inspired you to become who you are today? Okay, my I, I would always say that I drew my inspiration or I draw my inspiration from my mother. She's someone that takes all chances. In fact, her mantra is, at the end of the day, let there be no regrets, let there be no excuses, and let there be no explanations. So whatever your mind is set on, whether you're a guy or a girl, you can achieve it. So I think when I picked that interest to read pharmacy, she, in, she helped me, she encouraged me, and I went for it. So I'd say my inspiration is my mother. Thank you so much, Madam, for sharing. And another important question to know a little bit more about your experience is to tell us the difficult situations that you have to overcome in pursuing a career in STEM as a woman, particularly in your field of work. Okay. Um, initially, there's, there was this difficulty in pursuing a career in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But I want to say right now that I think the difficulties are disappearing as more women are showing up a lot of women are coming into this STEM, and although the lowest percentage of women in STEM is still about, um, let me say, about 19% of women in mathematics still remains the lowest in in a STEM, you know, women in mathematics. Whereas others are picking up, like the, also the physical scientists, like the computer scientists, the statisticians, the uh, geological, the geological sciences, the geophysicists and what have you. I think their percentages are still low, but I think more women are taking a greater part in pursuing a career in STEM. The difficulty is not that much, the gaps are closing in. That's what I can say especially with the help of technological advancements and all. Thank you so much for that yeah. answer. Um, what are the advantages and disadvantages of high turnover rates? Are they global? Um, advantages of high and disadvantages of high turnover rates. 
I think I I I don't know if I'm at liberty to say if they are global or not, but I think they have high turnover rates have their advantages and their disadvantages. For instance, advantages of high turnover rates, it's a, it fosters employment engagement with effective leadership. And then it enhances or fosters personal interactions, active employee recognition and mutual respect between the employees in the workplace. And also it creates a positive work environment where each employee can reach full potentials. And then it also helps that the employees are being paid the right compensation, often with attractive bonuses and whatever flexible work hours and whatever uh, thing they ought to get. Then the disadvantage, in as much as high turnover rate is not bad, it has its own advantages. It has some disadvantages like decreased productivity because of the, um, the productivity rate will be decreased, then there will be increased cost of recruitment, which will affect the cost of training new employees and then lost sales, then there will be increased workloads and responsibilities due to lack of an active or trained workforce. And not only that, newly employed uh, staff or new employees may suffer low morale as they struggle to learn the job and the duties and the procedures involved in their work. So I think I'd say that whatever has a positive side might have some negative side. So I think these are a few of the um, advantages and disadvantages of high turnover. Thank you so much, Madam. So uh, with social problems, do you think are the most urgent to be solved when we talk about girls in STEM? I thought hard on this on, on this some time ago. I think to some extent, the, the, this um, sexism is still strong in our society. For instance, if you Google this, um, this movie, um, if you Google this uh, statement, I'm too pretty to do math, my brother can help me do that. If you go to the malls, you know, use uh, the sections, if you go to the malls, you see the toy, the section for the toys, the pink ones are for the girls and all and all. You know, there's this internalization right from when the kids are little that, you know, what a, a guy is supposed to be, a boy is supposed to be like, and what a girl is supposed to look like. And then it creates a problem. You know, some people like, okay, when romance or anything enters into the life of the lady, she may not be able to focus on, you know, focus on of science and technology and stuff, you know? So I think it's still a problem and it's still a social problem that should be looked into. Like we should start early to reinforce from early stages that any gender can be interested in anything, especially STEM and can succeed at it. And then another problem I looked at is um, lack of mentors, you know? In, in STEM, in science, technologies, and technology, engineering, and mathematics, we really don't have um, much of um, mentors and, um, how do I put it? Yeah, mentors, especially. And then another problem, social problem, in, in, um, I'll use the African woman now, or the African girl, for an instance, is having something to prove. You know, I saw this movie, Hidden Figures. It's on Netflix. You can get it anywhere. I know. I saw this movie. It's about three women, three African women or three African girls in STEM, you know, and their contributions to the U.S. space program. Then in the movie, the women constantly had to overcome stereotypes and perceptions already. They had to 
do extra to overcome these stereotypes and perceptions. Though the barriers are broken now, but they are still here. And for the African girls or the African women, there are still some factors that hinder or block girls' assets, access or retention on mathematics and techies, all these technological courses and all. For instance, in the African environment or in the environment where I grew up, I would say that I think the girls, uh, girls of African origin suffer harsher discipline in school as a result of teachers not really understanding deep African girl. And then some of them, pick, some of the teachers speak of this um, societal stereotypes about black girls, you are too loud, you are talkative, it is inappropriate for learning math or engineering or stuff like that. So I think these are still social problems and they, they, they can be solved by changing our orientation, you know, reorientating and reinforcing these uh, ideas in the minds of the younger ones, especially. Thank Are you, you so much, madam. Yes, <laughs> I'm here. Uh, okay. We also talk, we also think that those problems are very important and we must work on it, on them. Uh, thank you so yes. much for sharing. And now uh, another common social problem is peer pressure that it usually comes about the first problem you, you tell us, you told us. Yes. So uh, yes. when you were a student, did you feel any peer pressure, especially because you're a woman? And what advice would you give to young girls to overcome this obstacle? Okay. Um, as far as I know myself, I, I always say that I never experienced peer pressure. Maybe because of my growing up, I don't know, or maybe because of my environment. But I know some other ladies, they experience um, peer pressure at some point in their lives. So I would say to young ladies, I, I really do not have an idea how much peer pressure can affect someone. I've always believed in you know, doing things at your own pace, at your own time. You know, I use this ideology that all fingers, they aren't equal, you know, and we can, we have different capacities. We are blessed with different capacities and, you know, different strengths. So you discover your own and work peacefully in it, no stress. That's how I've always seen life. So my advice to young girls, or to women who are experiencing such is to let go of all expectations and just be yourself, be at your pace, but make sure you are moving at every point in time. And then be content with what you have. I think one of the reasons why most people in, uh, get mixed up in peer pressure is trying to be, you know, to be or do things that they, are, they aren't really equipped for. So just take things one step at a time, one day at a time, and do things at a night, at your pace, as much as you can, and do it very well. That's what I can say. Thank you so much. Uh, I think that is an excellent advice to motivate girls and continue even with the obstacles. And yeah. another question related, related to this one is, how can we increase girls or young women's participation in STEM? Um, I think, especially for developing countries like my country, Nigeria, I think one of the ways we can increase particip participation of women is to, one, we'll go out more on creating awareness you know, creating awareness about opportunities in STEM for women. And not only that, I think it has to we'll have to also work on people's um, mindset and wrong thinking about STEM. If you, you know some people over here, if you, if you get into tech or get into sciences or something like that, they feel you'll be, you'll be, 
acting like a man, you lose your femininity and stuff like that. So I think for the African girl or for people from developing countries, you know, creating awareness to change their mindset about STEM and then creating opportunities that can help those who are interested to be, to participate and, and bring on their best self. That's what I can say about it. Thank you so much. Sometimes uh, the obstacles could be also economic. So exactly. is there any scholarship or another opportunity for girls or, or young women who are pursuing, pursuing a career in STEM? Yes, I, I came across a few a few there are still there are many of them but i just know some like uh, women technicals women technicals scholars program this was formerly anita board memorial scholarship you know uh, i think they start every 18th of december or thereabouts for the applications and all i don't really have the the uh, qualifications and the criteria and the benefits by heart but I think anybody can assess that you know then there's this Microsoft Research Graduates Women's Scholarship United States of America it's also a nice program for especially for women from developing countries and then we have this um I don't know how to pronounce it, this Combadja Scrambadja Foundation Fellowship for Women from Developing Countries especially African countries. And then this Elsevier Foundation Awards for Early Career Women Scientists, all in developing nations. And so many of them, there are so many others. But these are the ones I, I came across recently. And I think as more women get to know about it, they, they will actually actualize their dreams of um, of being in STEM. Thank you so much, madam. Thank yes, you. there are a lot of opportunities in scholarships for the girls that are interested, interested. And now talking a little bit more about your field of study, what jobs and career opportunities are there for girls who want to study in your field? Okay, in my field of study, which is pharmacy, there are so many, in fact, I think pharmacy in the long run is becoming um, flexible for women, you know? There are so many job opportunities for ladies or girls who wants to study pharmacy. Uh, the opportunities you could be, after school, you could be a lecturer, can be an academic chan. You can work in the hospital and the hours are so flexible over here. You close by four and you have time to do other things. Then you could go into um, supply chain and stuff like that. Then you could have your own business, your own pharmacy business. We call it retail pharmacy or community pharmacy over here and all whatnot. Pharmacy is so big, it's so vast, you know. There are so many ambulatory pharmacies, you can specialize and become a pediatric pharmacist and all whatnot. Pharmacy is so big, but so many of the opportunities it has to offer hasn't been tamped, uh, you know, tapped yet. Thank you so much, madam. Now, you're welcome. What will be what will you consider to be your greatest achievement as a STEM woman, educator, and advocate and motivator of your time? My biggest achievement so far, firstly, is you know being able to contribute to this sector, this healthcare sector in my own way you know, the joy of, you know, treating your patients and the person comes back and says, thank you, I got better, you know, and things like that. And then 
the 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 freedom you know to do other things aside pharmacy you i talked about i think there was somewhere my my page was written on health vote and all i know how many people has who has come back to say thank you for this and thank you for that tip you shared the other day it has given me an opportunity to reach out to some people who on a normal day i wouldn't be able to reach out to and create some some value in my world in my little corner you know and then helping people see that there are just some practical everything like in pharmacy practice everything is not really about drugs you know there are just some practicable health things health tips you just follow and you'll be fine and all so one of my, my biggest achievements is the, the the ability to be able to contribute to my society from my own corner and, all, and then helping people realize their full potentials and encouraging them to be their best at all times. And also helping as an advocate, helping against drug misuse, drug abuse, you know, speaking to people about proper drug use and all whatnot. I think, and, but I think we're just starting. We still have more grounds to cover and more work to do. So I wouldn't call them my greatest achievement yet. Thank you so much Thank for sharing. And also congratulations <laughs> for all the achievements and, and things that you told us. Um, we are really happy and glad to have you here and share with us uh, your wisdom. Thank you. So, uh, Nigeria is currently facing global health insecurity, especially on drugs addiction. What is your contribution to solving this problem, problem with your field? Or what do you think is the possible solution? Okay, Nigeria's problem with drugs addiction, I think, I don't know how to put it, but I'll try. The problem is multifactorial. It's not caused by just one factor. The economic aspect of it, most of the youths are out of jobs, idle, and stuff like that. And they end up experimenting with a lot of things which ends up causing problems and all. So my contribution to this menace in the society, especially on drug addiction, is First of all, most of the youth who are actually well educated need to be employed. You know, they need to be gainfully employed. They need to be doing something. You know, to and you know, then we need more of rehab centers. We need. We don't have. I don't think we have standard rehab. I don't know if we do, but if doing if they are, they aren't that much compared to what it should be. We need rehabilitation centers and all, you know, to help the people who are addicted. Then we need to also create more awareness on the effects of these drugs and or whatnot. I think the problem of this uh, drug addiction stuff is, is loaded. It's not just something you just talk about briefly sorry thank you so much actually eating deep into our society it has eaten so deep i don't know exactly yeah thank you and now for yeah. last before we go to the audience audience questions uh, we have this okay. question that is is there any insight in in teaching programs for students who want to pursue a career in your field? And what would you say are they, are it impact on them for its practices? Okay. Um, as a pharmacy student, there are so many bodies you can do. In fact, when I was in school, when I was a student, I had so many things I was doing that actually was enticing. You'd be like, thank God I'm a pharmacy, I'm a pharmacy student. I thank God I'm in a pharmacy school. Like the IPSF, International Pharmacy Students Federation, which is worldwide with our 
headquarters at Netherlands, the Prague. You know, every year we gather all the pharmacists from Africa. We have our symposium. You meet with other pharmacy students from, you know, all, all the African countries. Then we sometimes, some years, we go for our World Congress. We meet pharmacy students from all over the world. You know, it will open your eyes to so many things. You, you exchange ideas, you exchange, you know, not only ideas, you make friends from all over. I know. Then apart from that, even in the symposium in the IPSL, we have, we, we write exams, we exchange, you know, we improve and update our knowledge about drugs and all whatnot about pharmacy. I know. And then, well, pharmacy is actually interesting. It's mainly the symposiums, different bodies, different research, research um, meetings and, you know, carry out different researches, even as a student. And trust me, it's fun. It's so fun working in groups of like-minded people, finding people who actually think like you, looking at the problems, brainstorming on how to solve them, even as a student. And to me, when I was a student, it was all fun. In fact, at some point, I wished I was still a student because we had all the time to travel and do all this stuff. Thank you so much. We really appreciate all your, all your answers to our questions. And now it is time to pass to the audience questions. So if there is anyone with any question, you can put it in the chat box or open your microphone. Um, before we start with it, uh, I would like to invite you to our mentoring program. You mentioned that we need more mentors, that we need more people who are able yes. to, to show the girls that there is a path in a STEM that they can follow. So we will be very happy to have you there. Uh, we can contact you after this talk too. So you can join us and we will be very happy to have you there. All right. I'll, I'll be happy to be a part of it. Thank you so much. So is there any question from the public? You can type it in the, ah, okay. Osereme, you can, you can open your microphone. Okay, thank you so much. Um uh pharmacist that's okay um i wanted to um ask while um uh, you were answering the question on um some of the things you um are currently doing to contribute to um trying to get young people out of the uh, issues of addiction and the rest i wanted to ask what's the um i see that you are from the eastern part of nigeria and um I was fortunate to also um, spend some time in the East and I noticed that um, a lot of the, um, the there's, even if um, society is advancing on a daily basis, there's still this um, uh, mindset that female children are, um, there's this mindset that is passed on to female children, especially in most places that are not cities you know how how do you um how can you um help because you happen to be someone who um will be able to command such respect seeing that you have you know been able to accomplish a lot of things in you know in the space of time you you actually be able to influence some of these children especially encourage some of the girls Particularly, there was a, a school. I, I stayed in Abia State for a while, and I noticed that there was this girl who she was a maid, but she was the best science student in her class. She comes late to school, but somehow she managed to be wow. the best in her class. And you know, some of those um, girls, some of the times, all they just need is they just want to see someone. We, we probably might think they might have access to all the assets they probably will be seen on TV and the rest. But some of those people just wish to see someone who can just, you know, give them that affirmation, like continue to, you know, do what you are doing. And then they see um, a 
female gender like them who has achieved you know this much and is able to do it in spite of the prevailing you know situations in the country um how how do you um um how do you uh, intend to be able to, you know, reach out to some of these people, particularly in, you know, some rural areas where they might not have as much exposure as, um, as you know, those in the in the towns or cities. Okay, thank you for your question. I really do un um, understand you, and as I said earlier, the problem, the major hindering factor is mainly financial and financial i call it okay finances money now these girls they are very intelligent and all but you see that there is nobody to sponsor them and stuff like that it's, they really need somebody to sponsor them and then there's this mentality if she gets into this you know from the mothers will she be able to marry and stuff like that you know in as much as they need, uh, um, what do I call it? They need a push, you know, seeing a female achieving this. The major problem I'm having is finances because you don't just push them and leave them away and leave them, leave them alone. You have to still involve, involve them, involve yourself in their development with money. But how many can you cater for? So what you do is to uh, gear, steer them towards openings and opportunities that can help, you know, uh, fuel their their ambition and their zeal. I know. Um, as regards to what 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 do I say? As regards to the girls, you know, I think the problem, one of the problems too, we encounter over here is. As I said earlier, mindset, mindset of the people. And you see that sometimes, in fact, there was a lady, I she was the best in my class when I was a teacher. You know, I had to give, she didn't have money. She was also a house help. No, she wasn't a house help. I think she wasn't a house help, but the parents were more like below the average class. I, I gave her money, paid her fees, got her uniforms and all. But at the end of the day, the, the mother of the girl, I noticed that she stopped coming to school. What is the problem? The mother of the girl said, all these things are to what end? You know, after that, with all these things, she will still go and marry. So at what, to what end? So that's why I said earlier that one of the major challenges we are having is the mindset of the custodians of these girls. I know. Thank you. I hope I was able to answer your question, Mr. Peter. Thank you so much. Now we have another question. Uh, go ahead, Dr. Ngozi Ogugwa, please. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Mine is not actually a question. It's a contribution uh, to the... Um, we can encourage the, the girl child by being positive role models. We will go to the schools, and I know I've, I've started doing that informally. Go to start from primary schools, go to secondary schools, and even in the universities. Go and talk to the, the, the women there, the young ladies that are there, and encourage them. Be their mentor. Talk to their That's parents. Sad. Talk to their parents. Attend village meetings. Actually attend village meetings. And I talk to parents, and when they see me, they say, oh, yes, because you're, they know you personally. So they say that, yes, you're doing relatively well, and you're very confident. So they want their girl child to be like you. So that is one of the ways we can encourage girl children. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Wow, this is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, doctor. Um, is there any comment or question from the public? If not, um, let me thank you all for
support or your contributions, participations, comments, and also questions. And also a special thank you for our guest. We are very happy and glad. Thank you. Uh, we hope that with this talk show that is going to be uploaded to our social media, we can help more girls to get involved in these type of fields in, in the STEM part of the science. So um, if there is not any question, uh, we can continue with the, with the end of this talk show. So is there any comment? No, I don't have any comment. Um, Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. So okay, thank you. let me continue with the presentation. Here is a quote that we use to end with our talk shows. That is the word female when inserted in front of something is always with a note of surprise. Female CEO, female pilot, female surgeon, as if the gender implies surprise. One day, there won't be female leaders, there will just be leaders. So uh, we hope this helps a lot of people to, to, to think about what, what we can do, uh, the girls in STEM. Uh, we don't, we are humans and we all have different, different abilities that we can work on to, to have a better society. So uh, this show was hosted by African Girls Empowerment Network or H Network. Here are our focus areas. Uh, this talk show is part of the H STEM Girls Initiative that is a girls education focus area. Here is our mission that is about inspire, connect, and answer all the questions that girls have regarding careers and studies in STEM. If you want to get involved, you can become a STEM girl who is who participates in our STEM girls talk shows and interview amazing female scientists. Uh, you can also be a mentor volunteer, uh, as I told you. Uh, Madam, you can mentor a girl uh, so we can motivate more, more students to be part of this field. Uh, you can also assist in organizing a STEM workshop or summit, and you can help us lead our STEM girls talk show. Also, uh, the public could be, become a partner friend, who, that is the people who organize a school club in their schools air our talk shows in their radio TV station, authorized sharing or using of intellectual or physical properties such as books, apps, even home for a STEM girls program. Also, they can become a donor, donate for a STEM girls summit, talk shows, awards, or even a school club. For last, uh, you can also become a STEM girls ambassador, that is a person who represents STEM girls in public, we partner and friends of STEM girls and convey positive message about the different program support. Here is a well, uh, some of our social media uh, so we can stay connected, our email, Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp. So if you have any question, you can contact us of, or if you want to be part of us. So for today is all. Thank you so much everyone again for your participation and hope to see you on next episode. Have a wonderful Thank day. <laughs> Thank you.